Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to Retired for Life. So we got a couple of jobs on the uh, menu for today. It's a little late in the day. We've been working inside for a while. But uh, one of the things I want to do is try to address the issue I'm having with my trimmer. Now last year it just stopped right in the middle of a run for no reason that I could figure out. And it just has not fired at all. I even tried to spray a bit of quick start into the carburetor and gave it a quick pull with that with no luck. So we're taking the easiest route first. I'm just gonna change the spark plug and see if that makes any difference. All right, there's our old plug. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't see any cracks or anything. It is pretty black. There's our nice new shiny plug. All the way from China, I'm sure. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if it was just that simple? All right, we'll give it a pull and see what it does. So we'll make sure we're in the start position here and let's see how we do. Problem solved. Well, that was easy. Okay, we're gonna get this back up to the power equipment shed. because We don't need it in here anymore, and that's great to have that thing running. Uh, that's pretty important, especially when I've got the bush blade on it. So, next job, we're gonna go have a look at the chipper. They do a really good job of packing things up at Woodland Mills. So, let's get this steel cage off of this. Just having these bits and pieces of steel around make me think at some point in time I should buy a little uh, Flux core welder. It would probably be handy. As a millwright, I did do my fair share of welding. All right, let's get rid of this cage. Okay, let's see what we have in here. I need the manual because I do want to uh, find out what kind of oil it needs. I'm thinking maybe I can utilize the uh, steel skid that it's sitting on for uh, storage when it's not in use. I'll have to see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start taking all these loose pieces into the shop. 
and then we'll figure out what we've got from there. Well, good morning, folks. Here we are at another day. So I have come away from the chipper for a little bit to come out and address a problem that we talked about earlier up in the uh, power tool shed. Now we did get rain, but unfortunately we got rain sooner than I was anticipating. So I still haven't gotten back up to the sawmill to uh, cut more logs, but I hope to start doing that tomorrow. We may have one, maybe two days of a break in it. Right now we're expecting more rain quite shortly. But that has worked out really nicely for this area that you saw me uh, take all the old straw off and then I replanted it and it's been a steady drizzle for about two days, which means this is getting a really, really nice watering. And I'm already starting to see the teeniest bit of uh, green haze pretty much all the way across this. So let's have a look at the power tool shed here. So I've got something living in here. I don't know what the heck it is. Now my feeling is it could be birds like robins or something like that. Robins just go crazy this time of year and they're building nests everywhere. So it's possible that something is sneaking in right there at that opening. So we're going to have to do something about this. I'll show you why. I'm getting straw dropping from up here. You could see it sticking out and it's constantly coming down all over everything. Now I just cleaned this out completely yesterday and there is already a fresh batch of straw all over things here. I don't understand how because I did spray this with hornet spray hoping to contaminate it enough that nothing would want to be up there but that didn't seem to dissuade them at all didn't slow them down so i'm gonna have to figure out what to do here i think i'm gonna try to uh make something uh like cut a block of wood uh, just a one inch board to go up on the ends here to seal that off so that I know birds aren't getting in. And once I have that answered, that will tell me if it's mice. And if it's mice, well, I've got some traps for them. All right, folks, we got a couple of boards that I can use here. Now it's a fairly small piece, so I don't want any big knots or anything in it. So, yeah, this is really clear. So we'll cut this one first to our 10 inch length. All right, that's good. We'll figure out our center and cut our angle on here. All right, I'm gonna go do a quick check on this. And then if it looks right, we'll cut our step down in there too. All 
All right, folks, there we go. There's our pieces cut, pre-drilled, and all ready to go. Let's uh, take these up and get them in place. I'm telling you folks, I cannot believe how cold it is today. It's a rip roaring four degrees. <laughs> yeah, not that great. All right, let's see a bird get by that. <laughs> All right, there we go. It's not perfect, but I still want a little bit of airflow to be able to go through. Just to make sure things are vented properly in up at the peak there. This is gonna be kind of a, an add-on or I guess you'd call it a preparation for something that I do want to do to this building, just for the fun of it. I want to uh, take a couple of uh, two inch square, maybe two foot long pieces, put them in the wood lathe and turn kind of a design and a point on them. So this will give me a pattern for the block that I need to put at the end here uh, to do that job. That will be That'll be something for a fun rainy day or something like that later on. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you got any comments, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to work. Well, good morning again, folks. We have got another really lousy, cold, showery day so uh, i haven't got a lot done i have been uh getting caught up on all my video stuff so there's been quite a few of them come out recently but it is uh nice to get that caught up so as you can see the chipper is still sitting here i've got all the parts off of it uh, but it is still not on the back of the tractor and i'm not sure it's going to happen yet Today, my plan is to get down and get the rest of my logs up here. I've got a bunch of eight footers that uh, I've got to pick up that I want back. And I will be using my uh, T-Rex uh, trailer to do that. This is from Woodland Mills. And this is the older version of this trailer. The one they have right now has a green powder coat finish on it. As you can tell, this one's pretty much all galvanized, uh, which is fine. And yeah, great, it's starting to snow. Oh, holy mackerel. Anyway, I'm gonna get this hooked up to the ATV to pull it out and then take the box off of it just to get it ready to receive logs and Sarah is going to drive the Jeep for me. We're gonna put this on the back of the Jeep and uh, make a couple of trips getting down there, getting the logs and getting them up here. So that will be an interesting day and hopefully it won't rain. Anyway, let's get to work on this. I'll get the ATV out and we'll uh, start getting the box off here. Well, it is a straightforward process to taking the box off, but these things are heavy. You know, everything on it is uh, heavily built. So being straightforward does not mean it's simple. It still takes a little bit of work to get it off and back on. <clears throat>
that's all I need. And I'll show you what holds this together. So there is just a couple of pins here that are basically the hinges. There's one. And there's the other. So if you are on level ground, it is a pretty simple process. All right, that's it. Now, normally I would uh, just take this on the ATV, but since I'm working pretty much on my own, Sarah is gonna be helping me, and she is, as of yet, not ATV trained. So this will be put onto the back of the Jeep and she's gonna drive the Jeep. That will be a lot simpler for her. So the only thing I wanna do here is loosen this mast off and slide it forward so it's well out of the way of logs going into the trailer. So I'll just mark that spot and then put it back when I'm done. Well, there's our first load. I'll get this off. Got one more full load and then one single log that's quite big, so uh, it will be coming up by itself. All right, let's get these off of here. Well, there we are, folks. That's the last of my logs. So I've got the, uh, how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight of the uh, eight footers left. These will, a lot of these will get turned into uh, one by eights for my board and batten siding. Um, and if there is some nice ones in here, I might turn them into uh, two by fours because I'm a little low on two by fours. And of course, weather permitting, we'll get back up and get that sawmill running. Boy, I, I felt like I was running against the summer, but now, now I feel like I'm running against winter, which is kind of crazy. We did have uh, a little bit of snow off and on today, just very light sprinkles of it. And they're talking about it getting down to minus seven tonight. That's getting cold. No worries about bugs or black flies or anything like that anyway. But that's gonna be it for today's video, folks. So thanks very much for watching. And if you've been enjoying the videos, please don't forget to give it a like and share it around. And remember to be good to each other Stay safe out there, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. It's a lot more work. <laughs>